Hi, I am Sherry from Freedom in a Can. Welcome back to another solar powered installation in our vintage rig. And we are coming to you today from the absolutely beautiful coast of British Columbia, Canada. So a couple of months ago, we swapped out our Renogy 12 volt, 100 amp hour smart lithium iron phosphate battery for a self heating version of the same. And we'd had that battery for a couple of years. And while we try to stay in warmer climates, that's not always in the cards for us. And we'll be in some colder places. And even last winter, we had to heat the battery compartment down here in order to warm the battery up enough above freezing so that we could start charging again. With the self-heating function of the battery, what happens is when the core temperature of the battery drops below 41 degrees Fahrenheit, a small heater will kick on and keep that core temperature warm enough so that you can continue to charge your batteries with solar or an engine charge. So in addition to installing this battery in parallel with the other one, we're going to be removing our old battery monitor and shunt, cleaning up a little bit of the wiring down here and adding some bus bars. And in order to monitor our entire system, we're going to be installing the new Renogy One Core. This is going to become our new monitor for our entire system. Now stay tuned because we'll be doing an entire video on this later on the channel. So why are we doubling our battery capacity? Well, that is a fair question because we pride ourselves on being able to live and work with a very small system. But recently we have been doing a lot more video production work. That graphic intensive laptop is an energy hog and we just got a Starlink. So by doing this, we are absolutely maxing out the space in our solar component cabinet, but we are making optimum use of the space. Let's take just a minute to talk about the tools as well as the parts and pieces that you will need for this project. So to connect the batteries in parallel, we've got a negative and positive battery cables as well as the communication wire between them, positive and negative wires and the terminal ends as well as a fuse slash switch that will run from the batteries to the bus bars and some heat shrink for that and tape. Then we've got some wire cutters as well as some crimpers, a stripper, screwdrivers, socket set, an adjustable wrench, a drill and drill bits, and of course a heat gun if you have one for the heat shrink. Let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is remove all power sources from the battery. So we are going to disconnect the solar panels coming in from the roof via the MC4 connectors as well as turn the battery off. So we're just going to start removing all the wires and getting ready to put the new battery in and the new monitor. We have moved the ANL fuse from the wall over here and attached it to the top of the charge controller just to give us a little bit more room. We have installed the positive and the negative bus bars and all of these wires that are here were the ones that were stacked on top of the battery terminals and we've got them more organized here and we have a couple left over and one of these on either side is going to bring in the positive cable from the battery as well as the negative cable. So last thing we need to do is just tighten up these nuts and we're on to the next step of the process. All right, we've crimped on the lugs on this four gauge wire and we're going to run this between the positive battery terminal and the bus bar and we are going to run it through this breaker which is a 200 amp breaker um, serves as a kill switch so when it's in line it's like this and that breaks it We also added a grounding wire from the negative bus bar that goes outside the trailer to the trailer frame. 
The next step is to connect the battery cables uh, to put the batteries in parallel. So negative to negative and positive to positive. Now there is more battery cable here than we need, but that's okay. It's just what comes with the kit. Need to zip tie these out of the way so we have access to our communication port. Next step is to install the communication cable. We're going to put it in the part that says up on one side and a link on the other. That simple, it just clicks right in. All right, we're going to turn on the batteries and see if they work. Ah. Flip that breaker. A little on off wand, plug that in there, hold it down for just a couple seconds, and everything just came on. Yeah. Once the system is on, you can remove the on off plug and you can pop in your Bluetooth module to the same plug. So the cool thing about the lithium iron phosphate batteries and this communication link is that we have now created a 200 amp hour battery out of two 100 amp hour batteries. And with just one Bluetooth module, you'll be able to monitor it as one. If you click on the DC home app, you have to give it a second to load up here. It's brought up the controller and now the battery. Now what we had to do was click on this little plus button and click on add device. And once we did that, that's the charge controller coming up. There was one and then two batteries. And if you click on that, you'll see your two different batteries there. And you hit confirm. To look more deeply at your battery status, you can click on battery, give it a second. Now up here, you're going to see the maximum capacity of your entire system. So right about 200 amp hours. So that's two 100 amp hour batteries. And then down here, you're going to see the battery level of your different batteries. So right now we're looking at battery one. And so it's at 69.4% with a maximum capacity of 100 amp hours. And then battery two is 88.07% at just about 100 amp hours. The next step is to connect the MC4 connectors for the solar panels that are on the roof, and that will start sending energy to the batteries. Tight spot back here. The final step is to install the Renogy One core, which is pretty easy. Um, all you need to do is connect this into the back. And then this just needs a power source. So that's going to go into our fuse box. Now we're going to go over this in detail in our next video. So stay tuned.